hello hello my little minions welcome to the house of cypress this is the cypress and i want to do a check-in <laughs> i i keep saying i have videos to post and i have yet to post them so i want to do this check-in and as you guys can clearly see we're gonna go down the list we're gonna start with the lovely hair My hair is stale, and honestly, I'm debating whether I want to do braids. I haven't done dreads in a really long time, so I'm debating whether I should do dreads. I usually don't do braids. I usually stick with twists because they're just easy, easy to put in and take out for the most part. And I know if I do dreads, my hair is going to grow out and I'm going to have to touch that up and then I'm going to have to cut it down and I just don't want to go through that. But the hair that I have is meant for dreading, but I think I can kind of use it for braiding. I'm going to use it for braiding. We'll see how it turns out. Ha 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 ha! I'm going to make me some nachos i hope i have jalapenos the second thing my torn padella partial padella so long story short i went to the hospital to see the surgeon and the surgeon refused to see me he refused to see me and then said i was so upset i had to reach out to patient relations and all of that to get that settled and he's like oh well you see the nurse now mind you i was scheduled to see the surgeon again at the beginning of the month i don't see the nurse until the end of the month so relatively soon so i'm like okay but i had things that i needed taken care of and they just didn't care about that so i'm really frustrated Two things about this um, thing one is it's very hard for me to sit for long periods of time that aggravates me I can't really be in the cold so I'm a little bit concerned about like my sickle cell um, trait being a problem for me and then lastly I'm told I'm making improvements, but it doesn't feel that way. I do have sickle cell traits, so when it gets cold, I have a bit of an intolerance to the cold, and my voice is going to change. So I don't know how I'm supposed to figure out with that. Um, it's been a struggle to do certain things, like today. I did not feel well, okay? I also have something called TOS, which is thoracic outlet syndrome, which has to do with the nerves that come out of your neck, that come down into your shoulder, that come down your arm, into your fingers. And I just, this whole side hurts, it feels pressure. So the reason why you guys haven't been seeing me is I have been running. I have actually just i'm on close to my last session of this specialized ptsd therapy because it's important to heal while trauma is not your fault and you should never really blame yourself whether it is your fault or not which most of the times it's not you should it is your responsibility to heal and you should heal so i've been ghost because i've been doing that and i kind of will go into that in another video But this is the house of Cyphers. I am an autodidactic person, but y'all have never seen me done anything autodidactic. Hmm. So I have something planned. 
I don't want to say anything until I get the um, supplies and everything, but I'm really excited to come with a project. Now, autodidactic, I guess I can show y'all my hair, but everybody does their hair on YouTube, so. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do their hair. You damn sure don't need a tutorial from me. I'll probably come on and y'all see like the process of it. But that's it. Like y'all get the gist. You know. Plus I feel like every person should know how to do their hair. Am I like hairstylist banging? No, by no means. Don't know. But it's always fun. I enjoy the process. And we'll see whether I choose to do some type of braid or some type of twist or some type of dread. I don't know. I want something that when my birthday comes, because it is coming up, I don't have to worry about it until it goes. So there is that. So I have a project. And this is something that I've never done before. But I am interested and I am quite crafty and artsy um i know how to crochet so one of these times i'll come on here and we can crochet i mean i guess i could do it now but i'm not about to so maybe one one video i might do of myself learning a different pattern because i know how to do the granny squares and i know how to do and i and it's crazy because you guys are like do you really know? Okay, so like I, I thought I was like making myself a blanket here. Actually, as a matter of fact, and I have yarn too. But yes, y'all, I actually know how to crochet. I could have made these into squares, but look how like banging this came out. I thought this was about to be like a scarf or something. But no, I think I'm gonna like sit and crochet. But I'll do a video where I'll, like, teach you. I learned how to crochet in when I was 15. No, I learned how to crochet when I was 16 in occupational therapy because I had to do occupational therapy at that point. And um, they taught me how to crochet. I do want to learn how to knit. So I guess that might be another autodidactic project. Knitting. I'm not going to tell you the first one. I'm going to surprise you. So the first one's a surprise, but the second one, we can do knitting. So my check-in is that I have appointments for the rest of the week. I have, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm stuck with a lot of appointments. Um, I'm getting ready to meet my kitties really soon. So um, I do work for a math company. And I'm really excited to go back to work and do something I really like and something that is somewhat related to my field. So I am super, super, super excited for that. Um, I am also um, trying to manage. Um, it's hard. I think from my perspective, and I'm going to give you my perspective, it is hard being autodidactic being intelligent and being obviously black in america but i think from my perspective it's difficult because of a lot of things and i'll give you my perspective being a young disabled person having to go through challenges by oneself has taught me a different appreciation of the world. It has allowed me to see the world through a very interesting lens. I have faced discrimination being disabled. Will I say I faced discrimination based off of my skin color? No, but based off of my socioeconomic status, I have. Based off of the limitations that I have. And I want this to, I guess, be a reminder to myself or for, for you guys to just understand that going through this trauma of having my knee injured and my hand injured and my foot injured, um, 
it has taken a lot out of me. Healing is not an easy process and it's not linear. And I've had some ups and I've had some downs and I've supported people, but I have not felt like I've received the support I felt like I've needed. Um, there have been people that have stepped up to the plate when they can, and I truly, honest to God, appreciate that. But on an emotional level, on an intimate level, even on a more spiritual level, I, I, I definitely do struggle. And people don't see how I struggle. People don't see the fact that I struggle to walk or it's hard for me to do certain um, activities of daily living or just being able to enjoy something simple as going outside or going to the park. Like these are things that before my injury I was able to do and now they're difficult. A lot of people would say, well, where are your friends? A lot of them abandoned me because I, I had been disabled for quite some time. So I've had people they only come around when it's convenient for them. So they're opportunists. And that's another part of this story, of my perspective that people don't get to hear. I have a lot of people that they want to take from me. Now, I come and I talk to you candidly. And as I talk to you candidly, I talk to other people candidly. And they take this kindness that I offer to them and if you give someone an inch, they will take a mile. So I have to be very abrasive, very harsh, sometimes aloof and cold, so that people do not abuse the generosity I give to them. But in the same breath, the same people I help, I don't feel that same reciprocity that they have helped me in the same way. And whether that is a shortcoming of mine, or that's just how the cards fall or the chips fall it is what it is but I think what I want people to understand is that I am a single person I am disabled I am by myself I don't really have family that is like physically near because the family that is close by I can't trust them motherfuckers them motherfuckers are scamming and bamming scheming and beaming scamming and scamming you know what I'm saying and the friends a lot of them are jealous. A lot of them have their own issues and they need to heal. And I don't, I'm going to be honest because I've already told these people, I don't give a fuck what the trauma was. All I give a fuck is about people healing. All I care about is about, is someone ready to heal? And some people may never be ready to heal and that's okay. But I don't want these people in my vicinity. I don't want these people in my space. I don't even want these people in my fucking life. If you are not ready to heal from the trauma, from the abuse, from the pain, and you're not willing to free yourself, I don't want you around me because you're going to be a hindrance. You're going to be, there's a lot of people that have been angry at the fact that I've been able to heal myself. And instead of them using that as a source of inspiration, they use that as a source to castigate me. They use it as a, as a source to try to confute me. And how are you going to confute somebody and you have never walked a day in their fucking shoes? So with that being said, I'm very militant and vigilant at the people and the energies that I have around me because of things I've experienced. A lot of people, they don't want to hear my experience. They don't want to hear the fact that I've been through trauma. They don't want to hear that I'm struggling. They don't want to hear the fact that although I'm intelligent and I'm able to articulate this quite concisely, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that I'm single, I'm by myself, and I struggle to maintain activities of daily living. For some people, that's too much. But that is my reality. And I'm going to be honest about my reality because I'm a real one since day one. You can go read it. I'm always going to keep it real. I should, if someone, that's the one problem with being on social media. People are afraid to keep it real. And those that actually keep it real, unless it's like a traumatic story, people just overlook it and, and brush past it. Not in my case. So with that being said, that's just my perspective of being a disabled person of color who is able to articulate, but people don't want to seem to receive the information. They don't want to receive what it is that I'm saying, which is I struggle and I need help. You know, there's a lot of us black women. I want to be the strong black woman. And I understand that I have a lot of strength. 
to overcome a lot of the challenges that I've been through and that I'm about to go through, it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of power, no doubt. For real, on some real nigga shit. But at the same token, at the same motherfucking token, I need help. I should be treated like a delicate rose in a garden. A rose is beautiful. A rose is delicate, but a rose has thorns too. A rose is strong, but that don't mean it doesn't have any protections to not protect itself. Just because I'm a strong black woman does not mean that I don't need help. Just because I'm a I'm a strong black woman does not mean that I'm not disabled. Just because I'm a strong black woman doesn't mean that I don't have needs and that I should I should be able to articulate this. And it should be black men that come to help. But if it's not, it should just be people in general in general that truly want to help from the bottom of their heart, or irregardless of race. It's nice when it's people of your own race, as it should be, but just in general. So I put that into perspective for you with this check-in. Is there anything else? It's going to be September. And the reality is hitting me that it is a countdown to my birthday. And it is going to be, oh my goodness, crazy. Crazy how time flies. And trying to think if there's like anything else for this lovely little check-in with my lovely minions who I've missed so much. Um, if you haven't, you can like, you can share, you can subscribe, you can share this video with other people because I'm not the only person that's disabled, that's single, that's going through trials and tribulations that doesn't feel like they can have someone to call or pick up or to lean on. I can't be the only motherfucker out here. Like, I cannot be the only person out here. But at least I want to let you know I'm the realest motherfucker and I'm being honest. Like, I'm so motherfucking honest, you could braid my motherfucking edges. Look at this shit. Look at the look at the crustiness, the red. Like this is how real. You know, a motherfucker is real when they don't even lay down their motherfucking edges. They're just standing the hell up. Anywho, I digress. <laughs> I digress. I honest. I I truly digress. But I can't be the only person um, that's going through this. I definitely wanted to hop in, check in. I'm sorry we could not smoke, toke, and 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 joke, but maybe next time maybe a time is coming all right so please like please share please subscribe it's always nice to check in with my little minions i should do my little kitty voice i'm gonna do my little kitty voice for you guys i sound like a little kid okay let me see if i can do it thank you so much for subscribing i'm so happy oh my god thank you so much for subscribing and liking and sharing to the house of cypress she really appreciates it yay so um, first of all i i my voice register is like a mezzo i don't want to say mezzo no it's not a mezzo soprano Fuck, no. it's like a mezzo tenor my voice register it's a mezzo tenor. Maybe like mezzo alto. I would say like more like mezzo alto. And then, yeah, mezzo alto. And then it's very interesting how I hit my high pitches. It, it takes a lot of strength. And I hate to say force because you should never put that type of stress on your voice. But that didn't hurt or anything. I just don't do high pitches. I'm more like the low tone person. But yeah. But her name is Sally. And Sally says, have a great day. Bye. Like, share, and subscribe. And we will welcome you back again to the house of 